Hi, Daily Church family. It's Jordan here. Hey, I hope you're having a wonderful and blessed day today. Today, we're going to be reading the Bible in Ephesians 6 today. We're going to be learning about how to live in the victory. Do you want victory in your life today? Oh, it's going to be an exciting message today. Well, today, our vision here at Daily Church is to help develop and deploy you into the ministry. And one of the ways we do this is to help you start a Daily Church at Home. If you're watching from Church at Home today, stick around. We've got some discussion questions for you. All right, let's get ready to read Ephesians 6 together and learn how to live in the victory. We believe when you know Jesus Christ, everything changes. Daily Church helps people grow daily in their relationship with God. Welcome to Daily.Church. Living in the victory. Oh, I love vict being victorious. You know, it makes me think of a time that I played sports. And you know, if you're on a sports team, you want to win, right? You want to become victorious. And I remember I was on a team that was always losing. We would never win. Uh, and it was it just difficult. But there was this one game we played and we won the victory. In fact, we actually won the victory at the end of the, the tournament. We actually were the first place champions. And it was so exciting. You know, what does victory feel like? It, it feels like excitement, right? It feels exciting. But when you're defeated, something happens in your life, right? It's, it's, it's an experience that you don't want to, to face, right? But when you have victory, ooh, it's an exciting time to live in. You know, we are called as Christians to live in the victory. In fact, Jesus Christ has already won the victory for us as Christians on the cross. And, but the, the, the fact is remains that we are in a battle, a spiritual battle battle where we are fighting against Satan and the darkness for victory in our lives every day. Today, are you living in the victory? Let me ask you this question today and ask, and I want to ask you this personally, are you living in the victory? Do you have victory in your life? Do you feel like you're a victorious person? When you wake up in the morning, do you say to Jesus, Jesus, I am victorious. Thank you for making me victorious. And today I'm going to live in the victory. Well, today, if you're not, today you can. I'm going to show you how you can personally live in the victory that Christ has already has planned for your life. Are you ready? Are you ready to live in the victory in Jesus Christ? Well, today, let's turn in our Bibles to Ephesians 6 today. Ephesians 6, the last chapter of the Bible. And today's title is called, How to Live in the Victory. How to Live in the Victory. Amen. Paul is writing this letter uh, to the Ephesians, uh, to the Ephesians, the Ephesian church living in Ephesus. And he's writing this in modern day Turkey is where he's writing this too. But he is actually in prison in Rome. Can you believe it? He is in Rome in a prison cell writing about how to live the Christian life. And in this chapter, he writes how to be a victorious Christian. If there's anyone who knows how to be victorious, it's Paul, right? The apostle Paul. So as we read today, ask yourself, what is God speaking to me? What is God speaking to you? You know, we believe here at Daily Church that God wants to speak to you. Amen. All right, let's get into it. So today in Ephesians 6, we're going to learn nine truths in Ephesians 6 today. So truth number one is this. Are you ready to live in the victory? You have to remember who you are fighting. You have to remember who you are fighting. You know, in any major battle around the world, the, uh, the one team or one army has to realize what they're up against. Today, if you want to be victorious, you have to know who your enemy is. You have to know who you're fighting. And we're not fighting, uh, the Bible tells us, not flesh and blood, right? Not, it's not, we're not fighting in the physical realm. We're actually fighting in a spiritual realm, a spiritual dimension, right? Where there are angels and there are demons. And so we're fighting the victory of faith in Christ. Today, are you prepared to fight your enemy? Who is your enemy? Today, do you know who your enemy is as a Christian? Well, let's read Ephesians 6, 10 through 12 and find out. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of dark of this dark world against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Did you hear that? Paul is saying that our battle is not against flesh and blood. It's in the spiritual realms. We're fighting a spiritual battle. You know, salvation uh, is a spiritual thing, right? Coming to know Jesus Christ. And today there's a battle for people's souls. And as a Christian, we're fighting to save people from hell. And so they can have a home in heaven. Today, the, the, this is what Paul is saying. He says, be strong in his power. Remember, be strong in God's power. Know who you're up against. You're up against the enemy, 
but be strong in his power. How do we be strong in his power? Well, Paul's going to tell us that we need to put on the full armor of God to stand against the devil and his schemes. Who, is, who are you fighting against? You're fighting the devil and his evil schemes against your life and the people God has called you to reach. Amen. So remember today, knowing your enemy is half the battle. If you know who you're up against every day, you know that you're going to win. Amen. All right. So truth number two is this. To live in the victory is to put on the belt of truth. As we read about the armor of God, we're going to learn about the different parts of the armor. Now, this is armor. The, the armor of God we're talking about is not physical. It's spiritual. Just like your enemy is spiritual, there are spiritual things you need to put on, put on and equip yourself to fight this spiritual battle in our lives. So the first piece of the spiritual armor is called uh, the belt of truth. The belt of truth. God wants us to wear the belt of truth. And this is the first part of our armor as a Christian. Ephesians 6, 14 says this, Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. With the belt of truth buckled around your waist. What does it mean by the belt of truth anyways? What does that mean? Well, how important is the truth? You know, the enemy, I've learned, if you read the Bible, he wants to lie to you. He wants to tell you that you're not good enough, that you're not going to make it, that you're not saved. He's going to speak every lie he can. And how do you disarm the lies? Well, you disarm every lie with truth. What does God say about it? What does God say, right? The truth is so important to us as Christians because if we know the truth, the Bible says the truth sets us free. It's a spiritual it's a, it's, it's spiritual armament as a Christian, and it's the belt of truth. The devil wants to tell you you're not saved. He wants to tell you you're not good enough. He wants to tell you that you've done too many bad things in life. You can't make it to heaven. Well, none of that, those lies are true. Why? Because when God has saved you, he keeps you, and you can't lose your salvation. And not only that, do you know that you're loved by God? Do you know that you're God's beloved? Maybe you woke up today and, and didn't believe that God really loves you. Well, let me, let me share with you about the love of Christ. Let me share a truth that's part of our belt of truth as Christians we should wear. Romans 8, 35, 37 says this, Can anything separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for for your sake, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Did you hear what this scripture is saying in Romans 8? It's saying that overwhelming victory is yours in Christ. You are loved by God. Uh, and no matter what situation you go through in life, you are loved by God. And because of this, overwhelming victory is yours. You know that the victory in Jesus that he has for your life today is overwhelming, means that it's, it's surpassing anything that the devil will throw at you today, my friend. And that is awesome. And nothing can separate us from the love of God. Today, realize that you have victory. You have victory today. So put on that belt of truth today. Amen. All right. Truth number three is this. To live in the victory is to put on the breastplate of righteousness, the breastplate. What is that? Well, it's the second piece of our spiritual armor. And you know, that plate protects our heart, right? It's right here on our chest and that protects our heart. You know, your heart is important to God and the enemy wants to destroy it. He wants to take your heart out. This is what it says in Ephesians 6, 14. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist and the breastplate of righteousness in place. You know, what does it mean to, to have the righteousness in place? It means for you to know that you are the righteousness of God. When Jesus died for you and you believed in him, it means now that you are the righteousness of God and it's to stand in the righteousness of God. You know, every one of us sins throughout our life, even as Christians. But it doesn't mean that we're unrighteous. We're holy and pleasing to God. We are righteous because not of what we've done, but because of what Jesus did for us. Amen. So today, remember that you are the righteousness of God. And with that, your heart is going to be protected by the devil's schemes. Amen. So you are made holy. Amen. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Remember this today, that you are the righteousness of God. Amen. If you believe that, you're going to live in the victory. All right, truth number four is this, to live in the victory, be prepared to share. Be prepared to share. To live in the victory, be prepared to share. You know, this is the third part of the armor, the readiness that comes 
from the gospel of peace, the readiness. Are you ready to share your faith with someone, with anyone? Maybe it's someone on the street today or someone you pass by. Are you ready to share with them the hope that you have in Jesus? Let's read Ephesians 6, 15. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. The readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. You know, you and I have been saved, my friends. Now it's our job to share it with others. But today, we have to be prepared. Do you know how to share your faith in one minute, in five minutes, in a conversation? If not, study the gospel. Learn how to share your faith. Today, I'm going to share with you the gospel at the end of this message. And if you want, you can take notes and learn how to share the gospel and bring someone uh, to receive Christ in your life. That's the most important thing. So as a, as a warrior in Christ, as putting on your spiritual armor for battle, we're up against the devil, we're up against the schemes, but we're fighting for lost people, my friends. And the gospel is our way to, sh to, to break the, the bondages of p other people's lives. The gospel is the thing that penetrates the hearts and brings people to salvation. And the enemy does not want you to share your faith. So be ready, my friends, to share your faith in Jesus. Amen. Let's read 1 Peter 3.15. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks for uh, you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. Did you hear that? God is saying... Be prepared. Be prepared to give, uh, you know, be prepared to give a defense for the hope that you have in Jesus. Today, will you give uh, someone else hope that you, of what you found in Jesus today? Who is that one person that you can share Christ with? Today, realize that you are victorious and now you can be ready to share your faith with someone else. Amen. All right, truth number five is this. Wow, we're going through all these different parts of the armor. It's exciting. So to live in the victory, take up the shield of faith. To live in the victory today, my friend, take up the shield of faith. You know, a shield is so important uh, within this armor. It's the fourth piece of the armor of God, the shield of faith. Let's read Ephesians 6, 16. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith which is, which, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Wow, did you hear that? So the devil is going to be shooting these arrows of fire at us. And you know what? What do we have to block it? We have the shield of faith to block these arrows. You know, in my life, I think some days I feel defeated. Sometimes I feel, uh, you know, that I'm just not making it in life and I just need encouragement. Well, today, when, when I have faith, it does something in my life. I don't know about you, but when someone encourages me, say, hey, you're doing a good job, it gives me faith to believe that God is at work in my life. When I see answers to my prayers, I have more faith. And you know what? Whatever the devil is throwing at me that day, it doesn't matter because I have faith and I believe that God is bigger, that God is greater, that he do so much more than I can even do or imagine. Amen? So your faith is so critical to this battle. Your faith is so critical to your piece of armor that you're going to wear. And you got to think of your faith every day as a shield that's going to protect you from the lies of Satan, from the lies of the evil one. Right. Let me let me read about this faith that we have in Jesus, this amazing faith, you know, when we believe in Christ. Let's read about this great excitement that we have for believing in Jesus. Psalms 34, 8 says this, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. You know, the shield of faith has a lot to do with believing the good things about God in our life. If you believe how good God is, you're going to have excitement for living for Him and being victorious. It's going to give you faith. Well, let's read more about the goodness of God. Psalms 86, 5. For you, Lord, are good and are ready to forgive and abundant in loving kindness to all who call upon you. Amen. Isn't that exciting? How great that is. That gives me so much great faith and hope that God is with me, that God has not forgotten me and he loves me. Let's read one more. This may stir your faith right now. Psalms 107.1. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Did that not give you such great faith? You know, when we read the word of God, it gives me faith. And when you read the word of God, it will give you great faith too. So remember, if you're feeling discouraged today, get in the word of God, read it and get faith. Put on that shield of faith today. Realize you have the victory today. So put on the shield of faith and remember the goodness of God. 
All right, truth number six, to live in the victory is to put on the helmet of salvation. To live in the victory is to put on the helmet of salvation. This is the fifth piece of the spiritual armor, the helmet of salvation. Let's read Ephesians 6, 17. Take the helmet of salvation. And that's a great word right there. So what is the helmet of salvation all about? Why do we need the helmet of salvation? Well, this, the, what does the helmet do? It protects your head. It protects your mind. And the enemy wants to tell us that we're not saved, right? The helmet of salvation is to protect your thinking about your salvation. You know, do you believe that you're saved? I remember wrestling this as an as a early Christian, as an early believer. I remember saying, hey, do I, am I really saved? I believe in Jesus. You know, do I have to, do I have to you know, not sin my whole life to be saved? And, and that's not true. And the devil was trying to tell me that I'm not good enough to make it to heaven. Well, I realized that with the, hel the helmet of salvation means that once you're saved, you are always saved. When God has chosen you and saved you and you've given your life to Him, it means there's not enough good works you can do to make it to heaven. You know why? Because then it's on you to make it to heaven. And God says that salvation is a free gift. It's a free gift of God to all who believe. And all you have to do is believe and confess that you are a sinner who needs a Savior and to put your faith in Jesus and begin to follow Him. And guess what? you're saved. And when you're saved, devil can't even take it away from you. Isn't that great to hear? Doesn't that give you confidence? Well, you know that this devil can never take away your salvation, that you personally can never lose your salvation. It gives you new strength to be victorious and live the victorious life. You know, if I realize today that my salvation can never be taken from me, I'm going to fight the devil even more harder in my life. And I'm going to fight for the people that have yet to hear the good news of Jesus. Amen. So what is the helmet of salvation all about? It, helmet of salvation is about the eternal security of every believer. The eternal security of every believer. Let's read 1 John 5.13. And this is, what, uh, this is what John is saying to the believers, to know that they are saved. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know you have eternal life. Don't you want to know that you have eternal life? This is what, this is what John is writing about in 1 John 5.13. He wants people, he wants believers to know that they have salvation. Today, do you know that you have salvation today? Have you put your hope and trust in Jesus Christ today? If not, I'm going to share with you the gospel at the end. And you can put your faith and hope in Jesus today and know that you'll have a home in heaven and are saved. Amen. Let's read more, one more th part about eternal security. John 10, 28 through 30 says this, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is Jesus Christ. These are the words of Jesus. He's saying, no one can take them out of my hand. No one can snatch them. Even the devil can't take them away from me, those who have believed in me. Does not give us great hope? Today, this is what it means to wear the helmet of salvation. It means to know that you have eternal security. Amen? Amen. Well, that's going to give you great victory. All right, now for truth number seven. To live in the victory is to take up the sword of the Spirit. To live in the victory is to take up the sword of the Spirit. This is our weapon in Christ. This is the seventh piece of the spiritual armor, the sword of the Spirit. Ephesians 6, 17 says this, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Let me ask you a question. How powerful is the Word of God in your life today? How powerful is it? Do you read the Word of God every day? Well, if you don't, you're going to realize that you're going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. But when you have the Word of God in your life, you get stronger and stronger. Why? Because you have a sword in your hand. Think about that. I think one of the most powerful weapons that we have is the sword, right? You can have all the different pieces of the armor, but if you don't have the sword, you, you can't fight the battle. There's no way, you're just gonna be standing there. But if you have a sword, you're gonna be able to do something. And God wants to give you his word. It's the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God, my friends, and it's powerful. So, the more you read, the stronger your sword of the spirit gets, amen? Let's read Hebrews 4, 12. It says this about the word of God. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the divisions of the soul and the spirits, the joints and the marrow, 
and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. You know, my friends, the sword of the Spirit is one of the greatest weapons you have as a believer. And it's because the words of God have power. They have the power to save people who embrace it. Do you get that? The words of God are powerful. They are alive. God's word, it says, does not return void, but it goes forth to produce fruit that will last forever. You know, when you read the word of God, spiritual things are happening in your life. So I, I, I just want to just uh, encourage you to read the word of God daily in your life. And if you do this, you're going to realize that you have the victory in Jesus. Amen. So take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. All right, truth number eight is this, is to live in the victory, is to pray in the spirit. Oh, this is a good one. This is the eighth piece of the spiritual armor, to pray in the spirit, to pray in the spirit. You know, to pray in the spirit is so important. And to pray in the spirit is, is just prayer. We need to pray. If we're not praying, we are not connecting with God. We're not being led by the Lord. We're not being led by his Holy Spirit in our daily lives. And this is a critical part as a Christian. We have to be praying just like we have to be in the word of God. We have to be praying to God in our lives. Let's read Ephesians 6, 18 through 20. And I pray in the spirit on all occasions in all kinds of prayers and requests. With this mind, be alert and always keep praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given uh, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Remember this, Paul is sitting in prison. He's an ambassador in chains in the, in the, in the prison cell in Rome, writing this to the church of Ephesus. And he's saying, pray for me that I may have the boldness to fearly, fiercely um, um, proclaim the gospel. Today, are you praying? Are you praying for boldness? Are people praying for you? Do you have your church around you praying for each other? That's so vital to the Christian life, my friends, because we're all going to get hit. We're all going to take some hits from the evil one. We're all going to get discouraged. We're all going to hear those lies that we're not good enough. But when we have people praying for us, something happens in the spirit. This is the spiritual battle we're in, and we need prayer to be victorious. So Paul said, pray on all occasions. Are you praying on all occasions in your life? I don't know about you, but I pray throughout the day. I pray when I wake up, God, be with me, lead me today. When I go to work, I pray, God, help me accomplish the task you have for me. When I go to bed at night, I say, God, thank you for this day. I'm always in constant prayer, praying for revival, praying for God to move, praying for salvation. I pray every day for millions of people to be saved around the world. I pray that churches would be started, just like the church that we have right here, right now. As you're watching right now, I'm praying for our church that it would grow and God would move. And look at what's happening. God is answering our prayers, my friends. It's so exciting to be a part of this, but we can't do it alone. We need God's help. And this is why we pray. We need God's help. We need God to move in our lives. Amen. So this is what James 5.16 says. Are you ready? It says, The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Do you believe, my friends, that your prayers are powerful? Do you believe that they're effective? I'm, I'm telling you, I'm seeing the, 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 the impact of my prayers every day. Even, even this, this message that I'm speaking to you today uh, is just God at work. Even now, I can feel the presence of God. Uh, as we read the Bible together. Amen. So realize the victory that you have comes with prayer, being a person of prayer. Are you a person of prayer? Are you praying in the Holy Spirit? Are you praying with God's power for, for, your, for, for other people to come to Christ and also for your own life? Think about that. All right, truth number nine is this. This is the last truth. To live in victory is to bring the gospel fearlessly. To bring the gospel fearlessly. To live in the victory is to bring the gospel fearlessly. You have one life to live. How are you going to live it? Are you going to live it all for Jesus? Are you going to live radical? Are you going to live all out? What's holding you back today from living the life that God has for you? The perfect and amazing plan. Do you know God has an amazing plan for you? And part of that plan is, to, is called the Great Commission. It's to take the good news of Jesus to all the world so that everyone can be saved. Today, the door of, of heaven is open for anyone who will come. And they can only go through one way. It's through, it's through the door of Jesus. They have to come to Jesus Christ. And it says in the Bible that faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. People cannot be saved unless they hear. And guess what? You're the person that people will hear the gospel from. God could send angels, he could do different things, but he's going to use you to share your faith with others around you so that they can come into the kingdom. Amen. 
So bring the gospel fearlessly. Let's, let's read Ephesians 6.20. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. This is Paul. He's writing this in prison. He's saying, God, um, you know, pray for me that I may fearlessly preach the gospel. Today, are you praying to be fearless? If not, I'm going to be be praying for you today. I pray right now for every believer here that's watching that you would give them fearlessness as they preach the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we're praying for you today that you're going to be fearless in sharing the gospel. Let's, Let's read one more thing about this gospel. Matthew 24, 14. This is one of my favorite verses. Matthew 24, 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. My friends, this is Jesus sharing a prophecy of this gospel going to all nations and then the second coming of Jesus Jesus comes back for his church this is this is what's going to happen and this is what we're seeing right now this gospel is is almost reached every single uh, people group in the world in fact there are Christians that are trying to reach every single people group uh, you know, in the next few years. And this is almost, we're almost going to see the second coming of Jesus, which means every Christian goes to heaven and we get to live with God forever. But today, remember, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached. Are you preaching the gospel? Realize that you have the victory when you are able to preach the gospel with fearlessness. Today, I want to encourage you to, to become bold. And how do we become bold? We pray. We pray for the Holy Spirit to give us that boldness. So today, as we wrap up this amazing message about living in the victory, what has God been speaking to you? What has God been speaking to you today in this message? In this message, as we've read Ephesians 6 together, we've learned to live in the victory, remember who you are fighting. To live in the victory, remember who you are fighting. Number two, to live in the victory, put on the belt of truth. Number three, to live in the victory, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Number four, to live in the victory, be prepared to share. Number five, uh, number, fi- uh, number five, to live in the victory, take up the shield of faith. And number six, to live in the victory, put on the helmet of salvation. Remember, you have eternal security as a believer. Number, s- number seven, to live in the victory, take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And then eight, to live in the victory, pray in the Spirit. We need to be praying. And then lastly, number nine, to live in the victory, bring the gospel fearlessly. Today, are you bringing the gospel fearlessly? Today, I ask you that question. How do you live the, the victorious life that God has for us? Well, to, to, to live in the victory, it means to know that the battle has already been won in Jesus Christ. The battle has been won for you, my friend. Today, when Jesus Christ died on the cross 2,000 years ago, he won the battle. But we're still in the fight. We're still in the fight every day of our life. But remember, you have the victory today in Jesus so how do you apply this message? Just realize that we all need victory. We need victory over sin, sin today in our lives. And how do we have victory over sin? We put our faith and we believe in Jesus. So number two is to believe that Jesus died for you on a cross and you can receive him into your life. Today, will you accept Jesus into your life today? Today, have you heard the gospel that saves? Let me share with you quickly the gospel and we'll pray at the end. You know, the gospel is that God loves you and has a plan for your life. That's right. God loves you so much. And this is what it says in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God loves you so much. He wants to give you eternal life, my friend. But here's the bad news. And this leads us to sin. Sin is all the bad things we've done in life, right? No one is perfect. If you are a perfect person, then raise your hand right now. None of us can do that because none of us are perfect, right? We've all sinned. We've all messed up. And the, the Bible says that our sin separates us from God. But the good news is this. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ came, died on a cross, right? He died. Why? To take upon our sin, upon himself, and he died in our place. He took the wrath of God, and he died on a cross. He suffered for you so you don't have to suffer for eternity. Today, if you put your faith and trust in Him today, your sins can be forgiven. You can have hope. You can have peace with God. And you can have a home in heaven. Would you like that today? Well, today we'll pray right now. Today we'll pray that you can accept Jesus Christ and have the victory that God has for you. All right, so wherever you are, let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, I thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much that you love me. Thank you that you're willing to come to die on a cross for me 
and set me free from all my sins. Today I repent. I am a sinner and I need a Savior. Today I put my faith and trust in you. God, forgive me and make me a new person. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to live for you from this day forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, my friends. Well, I'm so thankful for you. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus today, it means you're a new creation. Your, your old life is gone and, and your new life has, begin, has just begun. You have the victory. You have, your sins are forgiven. You have a new church. You have a new family called the church and you have a home in heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, today, if you're watching Church at Home today, stick around. We have some discussion questions for you. But if not, I want to tell you, go in God's grace, go in His peace. And today, live in the victory that God has for you. God bless. Join us as we take the good news of Jesus Christ to every nation. Now is the time to give to your local church and support your pastor. Every donation you give goes to supporting your church. Your giving helps us reach more people for Christ as we start new daily churches together. Thank you for your support. God bless.